Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Virginia. Let me open with prayer. Heavenly Father, please bless this video and may your words be spoken, not mine. And let everyone who comes here be blessed by it. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the last video, we talked about the difference between the authentic gospel and its main enemy, which is the Lordship Salvation Gospel, which is heresy. Well, I have I have been shocked at seeing all the different things that have been posted on my channel since then. And one of them in particular, I wanted to show you, to show you what Lordship Salvation looks like. And this is what one person wrote. Salvation is only eternal the moment we step into our new bodies and are in heaven. To obey God daily and to keep walking that narrow path is what it takes to remain in salvation. This is not works. This is faith and obedience to God. Well, if it's part of the sanctification process and you're not trusting in it to be saved, that's fine. But anyway, it, they keep going. Until we are out of this flesh, there is no eternal salvation. And yes, faith plus works is the base of our salvation. It doesn't get any clearer than that. What a heresy this is. And I happen to look up this person's uh, YouTube channel, it turns out, that they think that they are one of the 144,000 virgins in, from the book of Revelation. Okay, so let me just say that I have this to say to that person and all the rest of the people who think this way. Jesus Christ loves you, and he wants you to spend eternity with him in heaven. But that can't happen unless you're born again. So admit that you're a sinful creature. Then believe that Jesus is who he says he is, fully God, fully man. He came to earth, lived a perfect, sinless life. He shed his blood on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins. He died, was buried, and rose again from the dead. And all you have to do is believe that. Just believe. Without adding in any of your own good works or trying to be good to please God, no, just believe. It has nothing to do with any church or any religion. It's like a personal encounter that you have in your heart between you and God himself. The moment that you turn your mind and heart to him and, and talk to him, tell him that you believe these truths. And at that moment, you receive the Holy Spirit. You are born again. You are saved. And you will never lose your salvation. Because salvation is eternal. The Bible makes that clear. So I hope that you have believed. And if so, please send me an email. My email address is in the description box. Or you can leave a comment below. I will say that I have been swamped with things going on. And so I have not been able to get back to all of the emails. But I will. I absolutely will. So... I wanted to add one more thing about the gospel. Listen to what Paul writes in Romans. Um, oh dear, I don't have the chapter. I think it's chapter 9. But I know it's verses 30, 31, 32, 33. Listen to this. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. It is innate in, in human beings to want to do it ourselves, to want to contribute in some way. And that's the stumbling stone. The gospel is, let God do it all. He did it all. And just believe that. Accept that. So, 
Well, I wanted to give you an example of somebody who has come to understand the authentic gospel. They were at first under works, righteousness, salvation, and then came to the Lord with the true gospel. And she said, I've returned to the Lord after almost 20 years of walking in the flesh, but I kept my eyes on Jesus I, but I, and acknowledged him often, but didn't let him rule my life. She said, a few months ago, I returned to the Lord. And she said, I've been watching loads of Bible teachings on YouTube. And she did say, I feel like something big is a, a, an ex, a let's see now, what did she say? Such um, an excitement that something big is going to happen soon. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. She said, around every corner, there are false Bible teachers. And she's, and this is what she said about how she felt. One evangelist I've been watching is a great Bible teaching man, but I have found myself sinking more and more into the feeling unworthy, unloved, and cannot be forgiven due to a being, a, being a backslider or for any reason, anything. And the preacher's, me preacher's messages are very strong. No one who sins will enter the kingdom of heaven. And so that's how you feel when you're listening to people who tell you that you have to maintain your salvation by being good and doing good. And then she says, I, I feel, find that I cannot live up, live up to God's expectations. And she was becoming confused. And the more she tried to walk worthy, the more fleshly and soulish she became. And so then she said that she had learned about the authentic gospel of grace, once saved, always saved. And she said, I started feeling for the first time God's love and peace, which I have been asking him to show me, as I don't know what love is. You will find the love of Jesus in once saved, always saved, and in the authentic gospel. And so this is a testimony from somebody. I wanted to tell you also, I wanted to give you a little update about my husband. Those of you who are new to the channel, um, my husband has stage four cancer. It is terminal. And he has been okay for a while now. But I'm sorry to say that yesterday he fell and broke his leg. And it was his femur, his left femur, that did have cancer in it. And he, we got him to the emergency room right away uh, in the ambulance. He's still in the emergency room. And this morning he's going to be going uh, into surgery to repair his leg. But it's the kind of, it's the kind of ca catastrophic event that happens to people who are terminally ill that you don't ever want to see. And so I'm asking you to please pray for me and my husband. And thank you so much for all of you who are praying and have prayed. It just, I don't have good news for you on that, on that front. But God is good and he's bigger and better than anything. And especially those of you who are new, who do not realize my husband is not saved. And so pray for his salvation because that's, really the most important thing. And I wanted to share with you how good God is to me. This has been a hard morning for me to get up and get ready to go down to the hospital. And every morning I read in the Bible, I have several chapters that I'm reading in and I just take the next chapter in each place as I go for my morning devotions. And this morning I was on Isaiah 40 verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. And that's how God comforts me through his word. So I just wanted to share that with you. And also, um, there is a, a watchman in Australia 
who sent me something that I think is really very important. I want to share it with you. He says, we are so very close to our Lord Jesus coming for us. Yes. Amen. Our Lord has put it upon my heart to share this with you, sister, meaning me. For a few days now, I have been seeing the number 23. Um, I think something, I don't know what yet, could happen on the 23rd of November, which is today. But it also appears to be important to our enemy because of the old Roman calendar. N November is the ninth month. At any rate, there is so much happening now that it is hard to keep up with it all. But our Father and our Lord and King Jesus Christ are in complete control of, of things, of all things. Amen. I have been led to these verses in Matthew 24, uh, 20, 20 through 24. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Winter in the Northern Hemisphere starts on December 21st, and we are going home soon. Everything is in place. Everything is ramping up. And the holy righteous judgment of our mighty sovereign Father and our Lord and King Jesus is falling on this world. It actually started quite some time ago, but hasn't fully manifested yet. In my heart, I know that our Lord and King Jesus could come for us at any moment between now and December 21st. So, all praise, honor, power, and glory to our mighty Sovereign Father and His Son, our Lord and King Jesus Christ, for eternity. Amen. I think this is an important message. I Nobody's setting any dates, but it's here. It's here. That's what I wanted to tell you. I know it's here. And the last little bit here, although it's a very important part, is that I did a video previously about God doubling and tripling his messages. Well, he gave the following messages to me a couple days ago, and it was like double, tripled, quadrupled. I mean, you just listen. The first is from Second Chronicles chapter 6. Verse 4, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David. This is Solomon speaking at the dedication of the temple. Verse 10, The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. Verse 15, Thou which hast kept with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, and spakest with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it, with thine hand, as it is this day. And on the same morning, I got these verses. That was from Second Chronicles. This is from Isaiah 38, verse 7. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. And verse 15, he hath spoke, both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. So this is, a clear message that God is saying that he has spoken something and he is fulfilling it, is going to fulfill it. It just was so powerful to me. I mean, I think there were five verses and more the next day all saying the same thing. So something big is about to happen. The world will be turned upside down, I believe, and we will be brought up to heaven in the rapture. And so be encouraged, everybody. It's here. Don't be afraid. Just keep your eyes on the Lord and keep looking up. So God bless you all. Thank you for coming. I love you all. And I will see you all very, very soon. If there's another video to put up, God will show me and I will post it. Until then, bye for now.